In this six-part series, we'll take a look at building a custom solver in Houdini so that we can automatically add the correct rotation to hand-animated or simulated packed objects. This is the setup I created a little while back and I'm very happy that today I can share with you how to build it step by step. At the end of this series, we'll be able to rotate hand-animated spherical objects, disc-like objects such as coins or wheels and even tons of grains from a particle sim. The idea behind the solver is quite simple. To find out how much the object needs to be rotated, we first look at the distance it traveled in a given time step and then at the circumference of the object, which is 2 times pi times the radius of the object. If we now put the distance the object has traveled in a relation to the circumference of the object, we know how far to rotate it. In 3D it gets a tiny bit more complicated as we also have to figure out an axis around which to rotate the object. First we'll look at the surface normal and the velocity vector of the object since the velocity tells us in which direction we're moving. If we now find the vector which is perpendicular to both the surface normal and the velocity vector, we have our rotation axis and we can find it using the cross product. Now I have to admit that there will be a bit of vex involved as we do this, but trust me it would be way harder to do without. So in this first part we'll set up our test geometry, we'll calculate our distance attribute and we'll set up our normal and up vectors. So let's jump right in and get started. So let's start with a geo node and a sphere. Next we'll need our animation path, so we'll use a line for that. Let's ghost our sphere and I want this line to point along the positive x axis and let's offset it in x, negative 0.5, so it sits right in the center. So we do have our animation path and our sphere. Next we'll grab a calf sub and set it to extract. So to animate our sphere on the curve we'll animate the first U. So on frame 1 I'll set it to 0 using Alt left click. On frame 120 I'll set it to 1 and on frame 240 I'll set it to 0 using Alt click again. So next let's set up the copy to points. We'll take our sphere and copy it onto our point. The sphere is a bit big at the moment so we'll scale it down to maybe 0.2. Right, that looks good. So let's hit the real-time playback button and hit play. It's quite slow at the moment. So hit V on your keyboard to see the animation editor. The second keyframe should be on frame 60 and the third on frame 120. And let's shorten the playback range to 120 as well. Let's hit play again. So that's nice and slow, so we should be able to see our rotation quite easily. So now that we have the basic animation, let's color the sphere a little bit so once it rotates we can see what it's doing. Let's put down a color sub, set the class to primitives and click the arrow icon to select the primitives. Press 2 on your keyboard to jump into the top view. Oh, sorry, let's do this again. We'll select primitives. Oh, and make sure to only select visible. Let's grab these up here and these down there. So we'll give this a darker gray. Hit spacebar 2 again to see the bottom. Let's color these as well. Alright, like that. And up here, hit enter. That is looking good. And now for the top and bottom, let's add another marker. So let's Grab another color sub, 
Let's set our selection for the top. I'll grab that loop up here. Shift A to do a loop selection. Hit enter. Set this to a primitive as well. And we'll pick a green color for the top. And let's do another one for the bottom like this. Shift A to do another ring selection, hit enter. Let's color the primitives as well. And let's pick a nice blue color for now. So let's see. Okay, now our object is moving, but we are lacking the rotation. So let's get started on our main setup now. The first thing we need to figure out is the distance our object traveled in a given time step. So let's use a trail stop for this, since we'll be using the velocity. Set it to compute velocity. So now we should have a velocity attribute here in the spreadsheet. And if we look at our points, there should be a marker for this as well. If we zoom in, yeah, there it is. If I go back and forth, we can see it right here. So now that we have the velocity, we need to figure out the distance. But that should be quite easy because the distance should be the length of the velocity vector. So let's create a float, call it dist, and this should be the length of the velocity vector. And for now, Let's create a attribute to debug called dist and set it to our dist uh, variable. And sure enough, we can see our distance. So one thing you'll notice is that that distance seems to be quite high. So now it's saying that we traveled point five units which is definitely not the case on a per frame basis so one important thing to keep in mind is that the velocity is calculated across a second so we have to divide our length by the frames per second to get the distance traveled in one frame. So this looks better already. So just to quickly troubleshoot this, let's grab another trail stop and let's trail one point. So we have two points in total. And what we can do now is Grab an add sub and draw a line between the two points. So now let's uh, measure that line with a measure sub. So we'll measure the length and that length, let's call it length. So that length should equal the distance we traveled. So if we now look at the distance it's around 0 0.02 and the length of our primitive is 0 0.02 as well. So the next thing is to add a normal and an up vector to our point since we'll be using those attributes to rotate our ball. So let's do another wrangle and we'll do it before this one because uh, the second wrangle will eventually be going into our solver. 
So let's create a vector attribute for our normal. And let's just have it point up in the y direction. Let's also create an up vector. And this up vector for now should point along the z axis. So let's set it to 0, 0, 1. So we have our two vectors, our normal and our up vector here. And let's also visualize these so we can keep track of what's going on. So let's click on our normal and on our up vector here. So let's scroll down and customize these. Click on the visualizer button. Since the normal is usually pointing in the Z direction in an instancing workflow, we'll make it blue and show the arrow tips and scale it down to 0.2. Next, let's adjust our up vector as well and scale it down to 0.2. And because the up vector corresponds to the Y axis during instancing, let's give it a green color. So now we have our two visualizers on our point. So that is working nicely now. So at the moment our top is looking down the up vector. So let's adjust this with a transform. And we want to have the top look down the uh, Z axis. So we'll rotate it by 90 degrees and now the sphere is oriented correctly. Let's jump back, hit play and see what we have. All right, now that we have the basic setup, let's get started on setting up the solver in the second part of the series. See you there.